What we have to address in our work stream is the food, energy, water nexus. So what that means is analyzing the future requirements of South Africa with respect to investments in energy, infrastructure, in particular renewable energy, water infrastructure, in particular bulk water supply in the context where we have very little required water, as well as food in the context of the fact that about 25% of South Africans are food insecure. The phase one work focused largely on the rationale for achieving a low carbon economy and did that through the SATM G model that was used in phase one. What we hope to achieve in SA Tide 2 is to deepen the use of the SATM G model to not only the energy sector but include the water sector as well. We will focus on what it means to invest in water energy and our food systems, but also understand the vulnerability of communities and people as it relates to these key sectors. What I'm hoping that we will be able to do, which hasn't really been done in South Africa before, is that during this phase of SA Tide, we'll be able to generate an understanding of not just individual sectors like energy, water and food on their own, but how they integrate with one another. Because you can solve a problem in one sector and it creates another problem in, a, in, in another. So for example, 61% of our water goes into agriculture. If you want to improve food supplies, you're going to have to grow more food, but we don't actually have more water. So you have to change the way you use water. Similarly with energy, we can't build new coal-fired power stations because we will never get them funded. So we have to build six gigawatts of renewable energy per annum. That is going to require about $160 billion worth of investment through to 2050. And nobody's really worked out how we're going to do that. So I'm hoping that by the end of three years, backed up by some modeling work, we will have developed an understanding of how we're going to address these challenges in South Africa.